Hello friends, I'm Kayla and welcome back to the series where I listen to an audiobook and try to find a hobby. In episode one, you might have seen me try painting, which is a pretty easy artistic hobby to get into. It didn't really require much prep work or education. And there was a ton of comments recommending the next thing that I check out. So I was thinking about embroidery. And then I went to pick up something like to teach me embroidery. And then I found these other things that look like embroidery, but they're not. <laughs> but they seem so similar to me. I don't know the difference. And instead of just picking one, I thought I would pick up a little kit for each one. We've got cross stitch, we've got punch needling, and we've got embroidery. And I would just figure out what they are, <laughs> what the differences are, and then maybe pick one to move forward with for the next month. And then from here, I will also like figure out my own supplies of whichever one of these I wanna take forward, because I'm assuming I'll finish these quicker than a month. I don't know. When I tell you I don't know anything about embroidery, like I mean it. I don't understand anything. I don't even understand if when you're done, you're supposed to leave it in this little loop. <laughs> But I do have, I rearranged my little office corner and I have a little spot right here where I feel like a piece of art would look super cute. This is Tattooed Army, um, it's hands, which I love on book covers and I thought that'd be a fun one to try. I got Craft Your Way to Happiness Cross Stitch Raccoon Kit. Oh, and this one actually says Beginners easy peasy that's the ranking that it got there were a couple animals but this was the only one left in stock and then this one is punch needling which i just feel like is gonna be my favorite even though i don't know anything about it and it's a rainbow but once i open these up see what's even inside and figure them out i'm sure i will learn something like what type of fabric it uses what type of yarn or thread or whatever i would need to buy in the future the like are there different size loops i'm assuming and like is the art printed on the fabric or is there like a thin piece of paper that you lay over top and then you go over it and like how would i make my own art and then if you want to make a bigger piece like do you unhook it and like move the fabric around the loop or like if i wanted to do a cushion cover for a couch would I need a loop the size of a cushion cover? Let's just open them up and see what's what. Okay, so the punch needle one clearly has thicker yarn. It has more tools included and it has the biggest like hoop. I really love the colors of this and there doesn't seem to be anything on here. So I'm assuming, actually I have no idea. <laughs> this one has like the design on here, which is why I think this one will be easiest at this point. And then this one is the smallest. This fabric has like little squares to accomplish like what's going on here i'm gonna read the booklets and then i think i'm gonna go in order of what i think will be easiest to hardest or should i go in order of what i think will be my least favorite to favorite because i really just think i'm gonna love punch needling just because of the tool does that sound aggressive i just feel like it's gonna be very stabby i have been hard at work completing these pieces i think these kits were such a great introduction to these mediums I have a lot of b-roll to share with you and talk you through but first i need to thank the sponsor of this video skillshare i talked about last time i thought they would be the perfect collaborator for this project and here we are skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for you to take i feel like if you want to learn a new skill especially one that's hands-on and art-based um, for readers who are trying to find something new to learn while they're listening to audiobooks which is what i'm doing in the series Skillshare is the perfect place to start. I've been taking online classes with this Dutch embroidery artist named Floor, and she's such a delight. In her introduction um, to the needlepoint class, she taught me about different stitches, 
uh, the difference between all of these different art styles which I desperately needed and then in her mixed media embroidery for beginners class there is a week worth of botanical prompts where I learned all about needle painting and I created this monstera leaf the classes have been super engaging and it's a cool community to be a part of because you can see like what your classmates are creating too and my eyes have really been open to what you can do with embroidery so if you want to join in the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in my description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today let's go over what I've created so far and the things that I have learned. Um, first up, I started with cross stitch. Cross stitch, I feel like, can be the most mindless one. You're just like counting squares. So it has this little needle. It's got a pretty blunt end and a big eye, and you're just creating these crosses. So you bring it through the fabric, pull it down diagonally, come back through diagonally, 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 and then when you're at the end of a line, you like come back the other way, and that creates the X pattern. Now, what went wrong <laughs> for me is I don't follow directions well um and I used the wrong gray so then I ran out of gray it was supposed to be there wasn't supposed to be a line here and I still haven't like finished any of my artwork like I need to glue or tape everything down and decide like what goes on my wall and what I want to do other things with but this one was honestly more enjoyable than I thought I started with it because I thought it would be my least favorite <laughs> but I think it turned out really cute I have to say though um attending floors classes um, she has this whole one on like forest creatures and the things that you can do with embroidery versus cross stitch is just beyond <laughs> the realm of anything I could have imagined. And moving on to the embroidery project that I completed, um, I don't like it and I don't love embroidery, <laughs> which is so the opposite of what I thought was going to happen. This one just inherently feels more creative. You have more freedom. Like everybody's cross stitch essentially is going to look the same at the end if you're following a pattern but with embroidery you're doing so many different things first of all floor taught me back stitching she taught me um what's it called short and long stitches to make things blend in she taught me needle painting she taught me the french knot this um sadly was the weakest like instruction manual that I used during this week like I was a little bit lost um and I feel like the photos are just not high quality enough that I can really see what the stitches were meant to be and I needed a video tutorial so I'm so stoked that I'm taking these classes because the number one thing I've learned about myself is that I need like visual instruction so I actually didn't fully finish this like I did the hands, I did most of the flowers, but I didn't end up wanting to outline them in the gray that I was meant to because I enjoyed how this looked more, even though it doesn't look like tattoos, which it's supposed to. So cross stitch like typically doesn't come with any image on here. You're just counting squares. But with embroidery, um, it's like a typical needle that like I'm familiar with that's very sharp as opposed to blunt. And after using the cross stitch needle for a week, this kit came with two needles and I immediately lost the first one because I wasn't expecting how sharp it was. And I stuck it through and stabbed myself real good and the needle flew across the room never to be found again. So what I've learned about embroidery is I just have a lot more to learn and I think this needs to be an entire video and needs to stretch longer than just a month because the videos that I'm watching and all of the mixed media, the felting, the painting, all of the things that you can include in embroidery is how I would like to explore this and it's not something that I can complete in like the time frame that I've allotted for this video. I think I will be revisiting embroidery because I don't love it right now but I also have so much more to learn about like fabrics and needles because there are so many like holes and stretching that's happening and I'm obviously just not doing things well but this definitely leads for the most opportunity to be creative and do so many stitches that I didn't even know existed. And lastly we had punch needling which I thought would be my favorite. I hate it. I hate it. I would show you the rainbow. Well, I am showing you the rainbow, but like I didn't even do this, so I shouldn't be showing it to you. And I brought home all of these supplies. My family got very excited to participate, and of course, I, I wasn't going to keep them to myself. So um, Rob and Liam, my husband and son, did this together. I finished my first line. I'm proud of the back. I think the back looks nice and clean. Here's Rob's progress. 
they had a good time um and the reason i have so many needles is because i picked up other ones because once i didn't get to do the rainbow i had to still complete the punch needle even though i did it a couple times that day like we all kind of participated in the rainbow and i did not like it but i needed to give it like the full attention so i got this mountain one it's ugly and it's not fun but basically you like thread the yarn or the thread i also got this one that just uses like the skeins that you use for the other kits um and i think it's this smaller needle and i'm still willing to give that a try so i still don't know the direction of this video but yeah you stick it through it comes out here and then you just like jam it through the fabric and when you pull it out you're creating like a stitch and you just keep stabbing and again i think if i spent more time on it i could enjoy it or at least enjoy the final product but right now this was not as fun as i was expecting and for these two they're far more likely to come with the pictures on it for you to just trace with your stitches um but these ones actually specifically didn't come with that so you have to take this put it behind it shine a light and then like draw it with pencil you can still see a lot of my pencil marks you can also use chalk and other things and the same is true with this one where Actually, I think Rob drew the mountains for me. This one is relatively straightforward. I think the booklet was good. But yeah, unexpectedly, not my favorite. So now I have three complete pieces. And I would like to, after this, have five projects. Five additional things completed by the end of the video. Not sure if I'm going to continue doing a mix or if I'm going to pick one thing but yeah now that i've learned the basics i've watched the videos um i can start listening to some audiobooks while i continue and the two things that i'll be reading for this video are right here we have the new age of empire by kinde andrews how racism and colonialism still rule the world in this he traces the foundations of power in the west to slavery genocide and colonialism deftly explaining their intertwined histories and then i'm also picking up a memoir it's called somebody's daughter by ashley c ford and this is it's the story of a childhood defined by the looming absence of her incarcerated father so i think these will both be interesting reads i've really been enjoying listening to nonfiction on audio i found this one on libro fm and this one is in my libby library audio app so I'll check in with you when I have an update. So I've decided to move forward with cross stitching, which is one that I really didn't expect myself to be into because just to me, buying a kit like this, like I haven't explored going beyond and creating my own art or like picking out specific designs that I want to create, but just picking up the kits doesn't feel I'm not taking away from anybody's like artistic hobby, but it doesn't feel artistic to me. Right now, it feels more methodical. You can get creative with like the colors and you can, there's so many things you can be creative with, but it doesn't feel creative right now. But I do like the organization of it and how methodical it feels, which I wasn't really expecting because to me, the reason that painting is so fun it was because you could see right away what the overall image is going to look like and then from there i could like get more detailed with it and add more things to it and that's my favorite way to create art so far with this i feel like for a lot of people it is satisfying to slowly see the creation come to life but i don't i don't love the feeling like i'm not a puzzle girl i'm not somebody who find satisfaction like slowly building something i want it to be something right away and then i can continue to make that thing better but we're going to continue with cross stitching because i think that i can make my own designs pretty easily and that'll be fun but first before i get into that i found two more kits it's funny how never in my life do i think i've seen something like this in person but now because i am cultivating this hobby i see it everywhere so these i found at home sense they're from Australia. I can't remember how much they were. I want to say $10. And I just didn't realize that this was such a thing. I thought these ones that I found at Indigo were rare and unique. And for the most part, people go to like Etsy and print things off from there. But it was so fun finding these. So there's a bee and there's peaches. And since this is my second time ever encountering a kit like this, it's funny how things are a little bit different. This one came in this cute little bag. And this 
is so much thicker and stiffer and I've put the B one in the hoop. I've started, I don't wanna show you yet, but it was almost impossible to get this in the hoop. Like I struggled for probably an hour, not exaggerating. And eventually I had to like fold the entire thing to get it to stay and it's still barely staying and it's popping out. And you can probably see in other clips that my stuff is not as tight as it should be. It still functions, but I feel like you can tell that there's some give when I'm pushing the needle through. It's also the way that I'm setting up my needle. So that's just the way I'm choosing to do things. Um, this one, since it's more rigid, it's harder to get the needle through the hole, but that also means that it's harder to mess up. So in the raccoon, you can see places where I clearly went just a little bit off and that's what's creating some of the slight inconsistencies. But with this one, it's hard to do that, but it's also, it's just hard to work with. And the thread skeins in these ones are like full ones. And I thought it was normal for the other ones to be as short as they were, but I guess they were all kind of pre-cut for you, which I didn't realize. And they had exactly that amount of thread that you needed. But with these ones, as I found while I'm doing the B, is there's way more than I need, which is cool because I'm gonna have lots of leftovers and I can do whatever I want with it. Oh, and these are coming in really, coming in so handy. This came in the punch needle one, but I've been using these anytime I need to cut anything. So let me show you some footage of me doing the B. I'm still working on it. And then when I'm done, I'll check in with you about my audiobook. I'm having a good time. This is also a very TV friendly activity. I've been, I'm on season six of Gilmore Girls. That's all I have to say. I've gotten there in the last week. Cause cross stitching is time consuming and I could probably get through 10 audiobooks if I wanted to this month. <laughs> came did not flee the east spoke the same had the same dreams same pain and same feelings staring at the sea and what was left of me okay i'm working on my b oh no i'm about to finish my b let me tell you this floss that's like metallic hate it hate it so much never want to see it again but i'm just about to finish up the b and i still haven't found like the perfect place i feel like to cross stitch so i'm trying my bed today but i don't think this is gonna be the answer because i know i'm gonna lose like the needle or something but yeah i just have a few more flowers to do and i'm done with this so of course i wear my little b shirt and i don't know if this is gonna be the wall one definitely need to do more i'm just enjoying it more than i thought i would even though i'm for sure still doing things wrong like i know that when i separate my floss like it's not supposed to look okay that time it, it turned out good but a lot of times i just get these big knots okay well that just looked impressive this so far i just know is going to be great and i want to buy myself a copy because i've been tabbing it i've been keeping along keeping up I've been following along in here with the audiobook. I definitely would struggle to read this physically. So the audiobook was a, a great decision for this, as it is with most nonfiction, I find. But then there are moments that I want to tab and I went to buy it and I don't think it's available in Canada. The thing that I'm finding is it's talking about like a bunch of other countries because colonialism, you know, there's things all over the planet um but when he talks about countries that he assumes the reader isn't from he will be very specific with like ex explanations so he'll be like um in australia there's this running conversation about aboriginal people and blah 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 but when he's talking about um america and like england specifically there's a lot of things that i think he assumes you just like understand which is fine um the book is broken up into chapters the first one is i'm white therefore i am then we've got genocide slavery colonialism dawn of a new age the non-white west imperial democracy 
and chickens coming home to roost. So this first section has talked a lot about like the very current state of the world um, as it relates to COVID specifically, kind of about how a lot of statistics that we are fed in all aspects of life are skewed and if you don't think really hard about them you can get easily distracted by certain headlines and think that things mean more or less than they actually do so for example he's talking about how uh it looks like covid isn't as big of an impact in certain countries um when you look at like the ages of people um but the reason that there's not higher cases of covid deaths is because people in other countries aren't living to an age that is most affected by COVID mortality rates. So like when the West was threatened with a staggering death toll, it was remarkable to see how quickly investment in and the development of a vaccine occurred. A vaccine within a year of the virus appearing would previously have been truly unprecedented, but has been willed into existence. Malaria has existed for over 100 years and claims the lives of 400,000 children annually, but there is no reliable vaccination. If those children were dying in Europe rather than Africa, the political will would have existed to find a cure. We saw the speed with which a vaccine was developed for Ebola once the disease left Africa and arrived in the United States. Sorry, that was the wrong tab, but yes, that's a thing also. But sorry, the accurate tab was, one of the main reasons that COVID-19 was not as devastating in Africa is because there are far fewer old people because they die younger. In Nigeria, which has the largest population on the continent, only 2.5% are over 65, compared to over 15% in the United States. A virus that mainly kills old people was never going to be as much of a problem for a region whose life expectancy has just crept above 60. So now at this point, because I don't want to keep tabbing this up, but I know I don't have my own physical copy, I'm tabbing the absolute heck out of it in Libro FM. So one thing I tabbed was about the UN um, and learning about the UN and like how Africa has been divided up, which is not something I completely understood. But now I don't know what page that would be on to give you the exact like facts about it. Well, maybe you already know the facts about it or maybe you should read the book and learn the facts about it rather than me trying to just read the entire book to you. So I'm still only like 20, 25% of the way through the book and I'm already really enjoying it and already feel like I can recommend it. So that's great. Oh, you can see through this. I feel like my biggest thing with cross stitch at this point is I need to learn how to make it pretty on the back. And I've already learned that like cross stitch isn't about knots. I need to stop with my knots. It's all about like basically layering things on top of each other. So they like pin down other layers. So you don't get big like chunks of um, thread. So when you're like done doing a line, you basically take it and you tuck it under a whole bunch of layers and then pull it out so you didn't have to create a knot but you made it secure okay so here it is the final piece the flowers are done everything's complete i think it's pretty you can't i don't know if you can really see the reflection off the wings it did make it very pretty it's just hard to work with and it's cool how you can create a different kind of vibe depending on how many strands you're using so this one is made with two and you can see the distinct cross marks but using four strands or six strands or eight strands just makes it a different like type of pattern almost and it looks like it's made up of squares as opposed to crosses but once they do get all gathered together like they end up looking like squares so it's just when they're on their own that I don't know that I love how this looks you can see all the little pieces jutting off of it but like that is the goal of cross stitch so I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> holding on to these peaches for a minute now and I don't really know what I want to do with them but it feels right to put them on something in my bathroom I don't know that I'm confident in what I'm doing enough to like put it on an item like to wear or to see in my bathroom every day especially if you're gonna see the back of it but I recently redid my bathroom and by redid I just mean like bought a peachy shower curtain and a bath mat and this is completely the right colorway so my towels are like this mauvey kind of color which i don't think this would transfer well onto but the one thing i didn't purchase when i redid the bathroom is towels like i never replaced my towels and i've needed to so i was thinking i will go grab like the green ones that i've been dreaming of and then maybe some white ones and one of those two colors i can put this on like the hand towel that just like sits off to the side and we'll just try our hand at that so i have to go to a real needlework store today and i need to find there's two different options from what i understand there's one that is like really thick material that basically you can just pull out 
So like you put it on top of the thing you want to be embroidered or needle pointed or cross stitch. You do the cross stitch and then you can pull out the things or there's a dissolvable one. And I don't know what my store will have in stock, but I'm gonna go take a look and just I see what happens. And a quick reading update, I'm 40% through the audiobook, and I just read a whole segment that was about uh, the history of the word genocide, which I didn't know, where it comes from, why it was used, um, why certain people, certain groups of people like refuse to use it for certain um, groups of people, even though it should be used. And obviously everything comes back to like white supremacy. And the reason the term was originally coined versus like the other situations that it should apply to are very much rooted in people not seeing other people as humans. And then it perfectly went into the next section which talked about um, like slavery deniers and there's just this great way that he words like how he challenges people on that the things that people say when they deny the impact that slavery had and his like rebuttal to that and why all of the facts that people will say like well this group of people didn't actually need this or like it wasn't as detrimental as people say it was in certain areas of trade which is just like obviously inherently ridiculous but I love when authors give you the language to like combat certain discussions. It's extremely well written and researched and it's gonna be one of my most recommended like non-fictions ever. Though I haven't read a lot of like history books in general and it's changing what I want to read in the future. So. Okay, I'm home. The Needlework store sent me to the quilting store, but I found I think what I'm looking for. And then HomeSense barely had any, like they definitely didn't have green towels and they barely had white towels. So this has a pretty clear texture on it and it's a little bit yellow, like underneath the white layer. So we're just gonna see how it goes. You know, if nothing else, it'll be a fun learning lesson. So let's get to it. I think if I were gonna take this hobby like full time after this, the thing I would actually invest in is like a pillow, which sounds so stupid. Right now I'm using a Squishmallow because I need something that can fit in my lap, but also isn't so long that it like falls off and just a couch cushion is too long anyway this looks ridiculous the angle that i'm filming right now anyway let's get this bad boy on here honestly i feel like this isn't the right thing and i got distracted just by the fact that it said cross stitch that I assumed that it would look like a cross stitch, but I think the point is, I had to ask this on the package, you are supposed to print stuff on it and then stitch over it, but I thought you'd be able to see like the, like the grain or whatever, the weave of it all, and I thought it would kind of look like this. Like there are holes in it, but when I put it on here, will I be able to see those holes? Kind of? You take a look, tell me what you think. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm gonna try to print on it. Just a little crooked. <laughs> I think my win with this one is that it's not like a square shaped picture and doesn't have to be perfectly straight up and down for it to work. So I can really put it like anywhere and if I'm a little bit off, like it's not a big deal. Okay, I've decided to do six strands just because I'm worried you won't be able to see anything on here um, and I don't think I can get this through here so I'm using a needle threader for the first time. I think I'm supposed to secure this really well rather than just relying on knots because like this will be washed and stuff. So okay I'm gonna put on my audiobook and commence the montage. I'm accidentally unraveling the towel underneath. This is not, I know this was not the right type of towel to do this on, okay? Like I'm fully aware and we're just gonna roll with it. cross stitch into the vehicle with me so I can finish it while I sit here and wait for something and I got this little it's called a needle minder it's like this magnet that holds your needle and it just makes me really happy then when I get home I can wash this thing off and we can see how how it looks
I am a little impatient, so I didn't want to wait for my towel to air dry, so I threw it in the dryer. And if it turns out terrible, then I don't know, I've learned my lesson. Oh my god. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, it's not dry, but here it is. I think it turned out so well. And something that I have learned is that for me, it tangles so much less and I get so many less knots when I Okay, when I use more strands. So this one was, was it six? And then I've already been working on my next project. So you're gonna see clips in a second where I go to Michael's, but I went to Michael's before I went to the needlework store. So that'll explain why there are certain materials that I have and don't have. But I've basically been working on something like I wanna cover the whole background of something. So I've just been meticulously doing that and not filming it. So I have a background to start with and then I'll start doing the thing on top. And going back, after doing six strands to two strands, like I'm just getting knots over and over again. So as you can see up here, I was doing smaller crosses and they just did not end up working out for me. I could already tell they look terrible. So also doing thicker strands, I thought that you'd be able to see more of this white coming through. And so that's why I wanted to do thicker, but then I guess that's not really how it works because there's no white coming through anyway. And then I did run out of that orange, but I actually think like the slightly different orange I had to use kind of looks nice. Overall, I'm very happy with this and I'll show it to you in the bathroom against the shower curtain to see the colors and then hung on my little towel rack. How adorable. Today is the day I make my own cross stitch pattern. So my first experiment I thought I would just do is take one of the paintings that you saw in my art video number one, take a photo of it, pixelate it and then just see if I can make it. I don't know how it's gonna go, but I think it'll be fun. I really wanna do a cactus, so I'm thinking this one or this one, but I also wanna do a sunset. So since all of these use kind of similar colors, I'm just gonna go grab like a bunch of shades of like greens and blues and pinks and oranges and then like a bit of yellow. I'm gonna need a white and a black. And I can hear Liam coming up the driveway, so I'm gonna take him with me. <laughs> Here we go. Look at them all. There's so many to choose from. Okay, there's that many of these to choose from. And I don't even know if these, I can't feel them, so I don't really know. I guess it's about the size of the <laughs> hole. Oh yeah, felting, that's a cool one we can do together. Yeah. Oh, don't shoot every single thing. You'll have to pull like a million things out. No, I'm gonna show them one by one. I'm gonna go, this is, um floss number three seven seven zero. Oh yeah in the color dmc sas damn it okay next <laughs> i bought a lot um i didn't like the colors how bright they were in the packages that come in sets so i picked out my own liam picked this one they were all 79 cents except liam's i told him to pick one out and he picked out one that was 189 such a bad boy yeah and then i got these hoopy doopies hoopy doopies and then I know this isn't like the right kind of organizer. There's ones that come with little squares or rectangles and then you wrap it around. Or there are lots of other options. They didn't have anything like that that didn't come with floss already in it. So I just got this one because I usually when I tie them up, they're in a circle. So this is just for now. And then these are the only two real fabrics that they had. This one seems too small. This one seems too glittery. But we'll use them both. I'm sure I'll have a preference and then I can know what I need to order in the future. So here's my little craft table. I love this thing. This is where you saw me do like all of my paintings last time. And the most recent thing I created here is these little um, erasers that we made all together. That was really fun. Liam's definitely on a little art kick too. So in here, he's working on his little felt penguin and then I can keep the projects that I'm working on. So. Right now, here's where I'm at with the cactus. And then he also picked up a punch needle and I grabbed an embroidery thing that were on sale just for the future. Oops, I have some fabric. Um, and then here's all of these. And I know that this is not how like 
embroidery people do things so don't worry i do know all of the right ways to do things i don't really know the words for them but i've seen in videos like the proper way to organize all of this stuff but everything was just feeling a little bit chaotic so i just organized it super quickly so it gave me a little bit of peace of mind as soon as i start in on the cactus then i will film actually doing it i'm sure there are like specific ways to create your own craft stitch pattern and like tutorials about that but i figured it'd be pretty easy for me to just take it into photoshop and i can just pixelate it and it turned into squares there but i thought a better way to do it would be the patchwork filter in photoshop because this will define the squares but not like blur it out as much as pixelate will and then from here i can basically change the size of it to make it so it's exactly 100 squares across and then i can divide it up into 10 because if you notice on some cross stitch well all cross stitch instructions it's divided into like cubes of 10 so you can more easily figure out where everything has to be and i've also seen people like draw on their fabric like where all of the squares are and that helped me figure out where i needed all my pink squares to be so i started out with weeks worth of stitching all of the pink background and then from here i had an outline of where i needed my cactus to be and from here i kind of stopped following my own guides and i just went with like bleeding the colors into each other the different shades of green i was following it for a bit and then i just started like using my own intuition staring at the actual painting that i made I started with the shadows and highlights and then filled it all in with like a medium kind of green. I did some flowers, I did some needles on the cactus, I did the pot, and I quite like how it turned out in the end. Here's a look at the final cactus. I finished the cactus, I finished the New Age of Empire, both of them full of learning lessons. Um, looking at this now, like I wish I had filled out the entire thing with squares, but whatever. I feel like this is cool maybe every single art project that i have to do will include like recreating something from the first video but i think i'm happy to put this on my wall mostly because i don't plan to do any more projects like this i'm gonna do more tangible things next but i don't know if you want a closer look before i hang it up i did some french knots here um there are some flowers i'm not gonna beat myself up about certain things that didn't work out perfectly and certain colors i might not like because it's going on the wall. As far as the New Age of Empire goes, um, I think it's perfect. It's a five star. I feel like I could recommend this to pretty much anybody. Um, there's a lot of conversations in it that like you would think should be a part of like education, but the reason it's not is to like uphold colonialism. Because one of the biggest takeaways at the end, oh, I can't even remember how it phrased it, but it was like, The risk can never be the solution to global poverty because it is the cause of it. The places in the underdeveloped world that have made the biggest strides forward since the dawn of the new age of empire are those that have had the least support from the west so basically he ends the book talking about like revolution and what he sees for the future of the planet there are a lot of concepts in here and conversations that i am familiar with and have read in a lot of a lot of other books um but the most impactful part for me was the chapter on colonialism and just the way that certain things were phrased especially this part about um, there's no such thing as fair trade which talks about the fact that like we see things that say like certified free trade and it's where like six percent of the profits go back to the country or whatever um but like a hundred percent of the products are generated in that country and harvested in that country and are due to slave labor so like a percentage going back to that country just inherently is so ridiculous and then i think the section on slavery that talked about um a lot of people think about slavery as it beginning on ships and beginning in the americas but like the impact on africa itself is obviously where it all began because if the industrial revolution in europe is credited to like the rise of the population imagine the negative economical impact on africa when millions of people are removed like work age or soon to be work age people i know that this is the march selection for the not a book club um with aaron and monet so i'm really looking forward to their live show and i would encourage you to like pick this up with them read it and explore all of the themes that they're going to talk about in their live but yeah highly recommend next project let's go
Okay, so since I'm a booktube channel, I had to pick up a cross stitch book and copy a tutorial from here. Um, I ordered two things from the internet just yesterday. Um, one of them was this book and one of them was a clear phone case that I think would be fun for the last project. We'll see if it comes in time. I just posted to my channel members if they had any ideas of what cross stitch projects I could do because I have a couple things I've been considering and so many ideas came in. So I really appreciate that. But I think a bookmark is such a good place to start. So there are a couple in here. There's this one, which is books. There's the final one there. And then this one that says books. And this one that says read a fucking book. <laughs> so um, that's the Book Riot vibe. I think I'm going to go with the one that's shouting books at you because it looks kind of varsity and I'm into that vibe. Oh, and the memoir that I'm reading today. Let's talk about this. Somebody's daughter, Ashley C. Ford. Let's meet Ashley. There she is. She's been named among Forbes magazine's 30 under 30 in media. She's written or guest edited for Teen Vogue, New York Magazine, The New York Times, Elle, BuzzFeed, many other web and print publications. And this is her memoir where she talks about growing up in poverty, her relationship with her mother, her father being in prison. We go through some relationships that she's been in, including experiencing assault and how isolating and complex such a childhood can be. I do believe she narrates the audiobook, but let's get on to the project and then I'll give you a reading update. Okay, so I'm starting in the middle or around the middle with the O. And I think, oh gosh, this is gonna get in my way. Uh, I think everything should fit just fine. But now I'm starting to wonder like, I'm having the same crisis I had with the painting video i'm like is this all a little too simple is it a little too basic because when i had people suggest things to do you know some of the answers were like or at least they sounded to me like big projects like cross stitching a pillow like a cushion that just sounds like so much work to me but i guess it could just be like a little picture on the cushion cover and that's what they meant but i was just thinking like a full-on cushion and maybe that is the type of project that i should be doing but maybe the idea is that like i try 10 different crafts and then at the end of it we have a discussion about like my favorite thing and then one of them i take into making like a bigger project of at the end of it all let me know your thoughts on that seriously been at this all day I don't know why it's taken me so long I've just been constantly messing it up and it's funny because when I did this one I was like this is the piece that I'm gonna make the prettiest like on the back I'm gonna keep it all organized I'm gonna make it so nice and I think it's actually the one that looks the worst so that's fun I really just kept messing up I kept getting knots I kept having to undo my back stitches because I like wasn't paying attention I have never ripped out so much embroidery floss. So now I just need to figure out how to turn this into a bookmark. There are instructions. I'm really excited to figure out how to do this like frayed edge situation. I made it so tight I can't get it out. Okay so I definitely like don't understand <laughs> the directions because it says to pull out threads vertically to create 10 rows of fraying. But like this is vertically but in the book it's looking like this, so is this vertically? Everything seems to say use double-sided tape. I don't have any more tape. And also, I'm a glue girl. Like, let me be a glue girl. I don't want anyone to tell me that this is gonna like destroy my project because I'm not gonna listen. Okay, I glued it. You were right. I shouldn't have glued it. Anyway, one sec, I'll come back to you. Okay, I fixed it. It's not perfect, but I made it. Baby! Oh, that's awesome. Thanks. Cool. Is it a bookmark? Yeah. Fun. <laughs> Ra walked in the house and I would have had only done a couple letters and he was like, what does that say? I think he thought I was spelling out his name. So now he's requested one for himself. But you don't want it to be a bookmark. You just want it to be on the wall. Yeah. In my throne room. 
new day. I just realized I didn't update you on the read yesterday. I'm just running out of the house and I was editing a bit of the video and I didn't update you, um, but I'm pretty far into it now. And I'm definitely gonna finish it tomorrow when I pick back up the audiobook. It is like eight hours. It is narrated by the author. Her voice is very conducive to audiobooks. I'm really enjoying it, but the, the cadence of the way she speaks just makes it easy to listen to on like three times speed, more enjoyable to listen to it at that speed. Look, I'm using my standing on the stairs and I almost just fell um using my bookmark and I think it's really well written I think she's a good writer I think she's a compelling author she's clearly been through a lot we've um gone pretty linear like through her life just different experiences that obviously have impacted her her relationship with her mother is rough to read um it's tough because her mom will say all of these things but then sometimes contradicts herself so she'll say like I will you know it's so important to support your children no matter what but then when it actually applies to her like there are reasons why she won't be there for her children there's one sentence it's not particularly beautiful or anything but it did something for me for sure she's talking about um playing and like feeling different from other kids and not having room to be playful she says it doesn't take long for children to teach themselves not to want what they've already learned they won't have and that's just a very real statement for me. I couldn't find enough reason to torture myself by acknowledging my futile desires for more stuff. I just love hearing about an author's perspective on the world and them referring to their childhood and like why certain things that they that happened to them as a child has informed how their opinions are as an adult but also how things completely opposite of their experience that also informed their opinions as an adult. I don't know if that sentence made sense. I have to go. I'm gonna do my next project and then I'll wrap this all up. Today's the day for my final project and the phone case came in. I still feel like this video isn't totally complete without like buying from a small business and getting a cross stitch pattern from like an Etsy shop but I've decided to hold off on that and do it when I really need to which is like with the embroidery stuff. I think I will really need my handheld when I do some embroidery and I've pretty much decided I am gonna do embroidery, not the next art project, but the one after. But it seems kind of obnoxious to do my own art, but I am. Um, just like, imagine the sun down here. Like, isn't this perfect? This is exactly, this is what I want. So I have this little chunk of fabric left. I'm going to trace around the phone and then I'm gonna draw the mountains and I'm sure I'll just be able to figure out like where the stitches need to be. And I have to use a pretty small hoop because I don't much fabric and I'm gonna have to move it around as I stitch. of truth where we see if this works as a phone case and if it's too thick to actually go on my phone you might think I should have done some like testing to make sure before I completed the whole thing that it, it would actually work but that would require forward thinking this is also the end of the video where I wrap up all of my feelings about cross stitch and I review my final book so a lot's happening right now I overall gave the book four stars I think her storytelling is really compelling. I think she's a good author and I would be interested to pick up um, more things from her in the future. The thing about memoir sometimes is it feels like, um, and it is that you just like read the entirety of someone's life and everything that they wanted to talk about, like they did. And also maybe because a lot of memoirs are written like later in life. Um, but you can tell with Ashley that she has so many more stories to tell and so many more things to say and that this just like barely touched the surface of all the things that she could tell us about and she even touches on that when she um, talks to her dad eventually and he's like write your story like tell your story how it is don't worry about me and my opinion meanwhile her situation with her mother is quite different i actually feel like her relationship with her mother is more of the story than the initial little blurb would imply i did find it to be a little too short um i think she like touched on a lot of things 
but so briefly and I was kind of waiting for these moments to come back around for her to be like okay here's the parallels between my dad and something that happened to me here's the parallel between like how I interact with my mother and how somebody interacts with me and I just wanted her to connect more dots and like give me a hundred more pages of perspective just a few things were too quickly glossed over um as far as my thoughts on cross stitch I like it I like how organized it is I like that you can do it kind of mindlessly but if you do it too mindlessly like you make a lot of mistakes so like it requires just the right amount of attention like I could totally listen to an audiobook watch tv like it worked what I will say is look this is like the same I think this is the exact same fabric Every project, regardless of how deep I was into this experience, took me like twice as long as I thought it was going to. But as with my painting video, I never was cross stitching when I didn't want to be. It wasn't something that I thought of as a chore. Okay, I think it's in. There is some more trimming I need to do. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it was long enough to wrap around. And now in order to get access to all the little holes, I definitely need to do a bit more trimming. Now, is this cute enough that it was worth the time when you could have just printed out something and stuck it in here? Like it's obviously textured and it's a craft and I enjoy it, but is it cute and textured and different enough that I feel like it's worth the time that it took? Well, yeah, because it was just like a one day project. The only problem with actually using this is that I would have to put a pop socket because I can't live without my pop socket, like hello. And I'd have to stick it right in the middle of the mountains, which might actually be okay. I like it, but let me know in the comments um, what your favorite project was that I did. If any, maybe you hated them all, I don't know you. Let me know if you're considering picking up either of these now or what your thoughts on them were if you've already read them. And thanks so much for hanging out with me for my second trying to find a hobby art project situation.